So this was an experiment uh, done by Daniel Haynes from Leipzig. I, I say nothing like this had uh, been given to, the, to them before. Some of them failed. Some of them succeeded like this. Uh, there's an X-rated version. <laughs> one, one young male urinated into the tube. <laughs> so she got her peanuts. Um, and uh, so just be aware that there's lots of uh, ingenious things going on in the wild. Um, uh, here we have uh, another example. Can we uh, show this one, please? So here we are in uh, uh, the uh, northern part of Congo, uh, in Doki National Park, where Cricket Sons and David Morgan have done studies. And uh, if you can see, there is a baby clinging on to this mother and what she is doing here is trying to get about a handful of honey, the honey of a stingless bee. And here she is almost upside down, hammering away. Sometimes they hammer like this for uh, 300 blows. Turn. So this is just to remind you, we're dealing with very intelligent species that have can come up with uh, remarkable solutions. We're dealing with a species, too, that has um, uh, clearly, occasionally, a tendency for uh, altruistic behavior, pro-social behavior. And there's a wonderful example that came just recently in a tragic context. Uh, here is uh, one of the chimpanzees in my study site that has got a uh, wire wrapped around its fingers. And this one was saved by an intervention where we darted and uh, took the wire off, and, and he was fine after that. But the story I just want to mention is one that Vernon Reynolds has sent around this week from Budongo, where an adult male found a female who had got a snare on her arm, and he took it off her. So that's a, a remarkable example of uh, a willingness to help another individual. Uh, we see similarities in various kinds of social behavior, and uh, I suspect that Juichi Yamagi will be talking a little bit about uh, the tendency for uh, male bonding, uh, whether it's used in uh, peaceful interactions or more often in violent interactions to be found in chimpanzees in somewhat similar way to humans. And there is hunting as well. That was one of uh, Jane's earliest discoveries that really brought home the similarities of chimpanzees to humans in a very significant way because this is a, thought to have played such an important role in early hunting gathering adaptations. Now, hunting uh, is something which is of interest because you might think that everything is similar, and of course it's not because humans use weapons, and there may be quite a lot of differences in the, the dynamics of the hunting. Uh, on the surface, it seems as though cooperation is very important for chimpanzees. Here we have a couple of examples where you see a rising probability of chimpanzees hunting if there are more hunters present in the group that encounters a group of colobus monkeys, and a rising probability of their succeeding and getting some meat as a result. So to what extent are they cooperating? Well, it turns out from uh, studies on our own site, from Ian Gilby, that uh, this is entirely dependent on two particular individual males, AJ and MS. If those males are present, then there is this rising curve. If they are absent, then there is no such rising curve, suggesting that in some circumstances, what we're seeing here is the result of a male who happens to just be tremendously excited about hunting, and then others come in under his protective shadow. And I've done that funny thing with the colobus monkey males to remind us that the uh, ability to hunt depends on penetrating past a, uh, a screen of uh, red colobus males who are very tough themselves, and it takes a lot of courage to be able to do so. Those two males are very courageous. The others are a bit feeble and take advantage. We're learning more about um, hunting. Uh, for those of you who uh, haven't caught up with the news, uh, there used to be the idea that uh, chimpanzees exchange meat for sex, and uh, all sorts of analyses uh, that uh, we've done recently suggest that this is not true. Here's one example. Um, it shows that uh, when swollen females are present, sexually swollen females promising some sex, then the probability of hunting for a given party size is actually reduced. And so instead of meat for sex, it's now meat or sex. The males get uh, more interested in staying with the females. Uh, it is sometimes wondered if uh, meat is a way to, um, to uh, supply food when other foods are not available. 
Uh, you may have noticed in the slide I showed earlier that uh, although you have a rising probability of hunting with the number of males in the party, uh, the uh, probability is greater if there's more fruit available. So in uh, chimpanzees, meat is a luxury rather than a, uh, a, a supply that adds when plant foods are not available. So there are various ways in which uh, we see differences. We have to be careful about the similarities and probing those and understanding the dynamics is a very important challenge for the future. Let me mention a second uh, notion of uh, the way in which uh, our uh, views of humanity have changed a little bit, and this is that sex differences really are important. You know, there's still a lot of discussion in the social sciences about the extent of biological input to sex differences. Well, there were these lovely studies of Elizabeth Lonsdorf uh, recently where uh, she showed that boy chimpanzees and girl chimpanzees learn differently when they are in the presence of their mothers at a termite fishing mound. The boys don't learn as well. What you see in this curve is that the girls represented in the dashed line achieve a, uh, a success in termiting faster than the boys do, and they end up copying their mothers and adopting their tools. So this uh, study, um, uh, organized by Elizabeth and Anne Pusey, showed that uh, females were more successful at learning, and it looked as though males had a sort of uh, version of uh, what boys do in schools today, uh, uh, minor ADHD, always going off and playing with uh, other kids and not paying attention to their tasks. Here's another example which um, uh, comes from, uh, in some ways, the fact that in uh, Kibali we see uh, males sometimes using large sticks to club uh, other individuals with. And this speaks to the tendency worldwide in all sorts of different cultures for girls to play with dolls and boys to play with um, toys as weapons. And uh, it, it comes from the fact that in Kibali we find that uh, there is a frequent playing with dry sticks by juveniles. Uh, you see on the left here some examples of uh, things that we call dolls where they just pick them up and carry them for sometimes several hours and then just drop them again maybe uh, sometimes uh, putting them on their lap while they're feeding, that sort of thing. Uh, and um, it turns out that there is a huge sex difference in this. Uh, the girls do it more often than the boys, and the uh, females are uh, the ones who carry the sticks in uh, simply just carrying them about, uh, whereas the males, when they have sticks, they use them as weapons. This is kind of intriguing because uh, there's nothing very like this in the adults. I mean, they don't use them in quite the same way, and certainly the uh, adults uh, don't uh, carry them very often. Uh, so uh, this looks like a, a, a culture that's been carried among the juveniles. And it looks like a culture because it's uh, more in this particular study site than elsewhere to judge from reports so far. So uh, here's a third area in which I think chimpanzees have helped change our, our uh, perspective. First of all, something um, which uh, maybe they haven't changed it very much, but we're getting a, a sense of um, how uh, the violence that we see in domestic relationships can have analogs in uh, our closest relatives. With chimpanzees, what we're seeing is an explanation now for the fact that's been known for a long time that males regularly beat up on females. They beat up more on the females when they're more sexually attractive, but they will beat up on them in various contexts but still they will beat up on um, uh, females who are in the process of going through cycling, even when they don't have a sexual swelling, than those who are lactating and not cycling at all. They beat up more on them when they have a sexual swelling than when they do not have a sexual swelling. They beat on them more when they uh, are in the ovulatory phase of the sexual swelling than in the non-ovulatory phase. And here we see one of the apparent consequences. Uh, what we see for each of these females is that the rate at which uh, she approaches uh, on her own initiative two males for uh, copulation increases with the amount of aggression that she has received from those males. This is part of a series of evidence that there are um, what we might call cases of relationship violence in chimpanzees. Uh, males, uh, as it were, training females for uh, future willingness to, um, to conform to their wishes. <clears throat> 